Okay, welcome back for our second installment of our uh, world's greatest chess games ever. Uh, this this is perhaps the most analyzed game in the world. It's the the second game from the book, the mammoth book of the world's greatest chess games ever played. It's um, the very very famous immortal game uh, by um, Adolf Anderson against Lionel Kizaritsky. Um Anderson, the strongest player for a while. Um, he called himself sort of the world champion, even though there was no world champion back in those days. This is a game from 1851, was played in London. And um, Kizaritsky was a good player, but not as good as, uh, as Anderson. And he's probably mostly remembered for losing this game. Um, that's the spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, f f again, for for no particular reason, I couldn't find this game in the chess.com database. I had to look for it in a, in a different way, which is also why it doesn't say um, Lionel Kizaritsky over here. It says Lionel Adelbart Bagration fell. I have no idea why that is. It makes no sense to me, but I'm pretty sure it is the immortal game um, so game starts off e4 e5 king's gambit king's gambit accepted bishop c4 which is a move that I never play when I play the king's gambit I always play this I always play the knight out to protect against the check but I think this is a favorite of many player I think there is a pretty cool um, if you're a member of chess.com, there's a pretty cool video series on this move, I think, by the Ginger G. I'm not particularly sure. Um, okay. Anyway, I think, I think Bobby Fischer played this at some point. Okay. So there's the check. You move the king. Um... Modern players prefer knight f3, f3, there you go, or d5. So modern players, they don't really care about this move. They just play knight f6. They don't care about the check because basically this is good. You, you can play this. b5, interesting pawn sacrifice. Um, not really sure. This is alone. This is not doing so much. And, um, okay, anyway, he accepts. In the analysis, they say this counter gambit was named after the American amateur players Thomas Jefferson Bryan, who was active in chess circles around Paris and London in the middle of the 19th century. Kizaritsky also took a shine to it, especially after his pretty win over Shilton, see below. However, it has always been considered, to put mildly, somewhat dubious. That said, it has been utilized by none other than Garry Kasparov. There you go. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Kasparov, Kasparov crushed short. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Right, bishop, bishop takes b5, knight f6. Now this is funny. Um, White played the king's gambit, gave up, gave up a pawn in order to get. Usually you give up the pawn to get quick development, but now you know you've you've moved your king. You only got one piece out. The other guy's got two pieces out, and you know material is even even. So that's one way, you know, to to say to the guy who plays the king's gambit, um, you know, I don't I don't care that you like to play the king's gambit. I'm I'm just not going to, you know, I'm not going to give you all the extra stuff. Anyway, all right. Knight f three. 
there there he is okay G gains it gains a tempo back on the queen okay they give you they give a funny game uh where Schulten who lost that game played this and then knight g4 okay just caveman style threatening checkmate I guess Knight h3, just trying to trying to take some control. Knight takes c7, check. Wait, what? All right, Knight c6 first, obviously. There we go. Forgot a couple of moves. Knight d5, going for counterplay. Knight d4. Okay. Right. Knight takes d7, king d8. Knight takes rook, f3. f3. How's there an f3? All right, f3 by black, of course. d3. Okay. F6. <laughs> Funny. Bishop C4. Wait, what? Bishop C4. Jesus. D5. Bishop takes D5. Bishop D6. I'm I'm just showing you this because I thought it was a short line, but it's really pretty long. They give this a question mark. Queen Queen E1. Also with a question mark. F takes G2. Check. King takes g2, queen takes h3, double check, sorry, double x clam, sacrificing the queen, knight e3, yeah, okay, funny, you got the, uh, you got that thing, knight e3? Right, king h4. That's it, that's a king hunt. Knight f3, forking. King h5. Run, forest. And now don't take the queen. Because, because bishop g4 is actually mate. That's, that's, a, that's a clever mate. That is, uh, that's a funny mate. This is, what's what's ironic about it, um, sort of, is that um, Kizaritsky here checkmates the king with three minor pieces, being a queen down. Now, that's ironic because he gets checkmated later on with three minor pieces where the other guy uh, sack, sacks a lot of stuff, but also is and also is queen. Okay, we shouldn't be here. We should be here. Right. So knight f three this time. Queen goes back. Queen h six. Right. We have that d three. Strengthening that center. Also, I spy with my little eye, a little a little pin, which could be annoying. Now, I'm just wondering why you don't play d4. Just take the entire, okay, because this is hanging. Right, the knight is, knight is attacking that, okay. Um, this is more active according to the annotators. 
Yeah, and then you got another long line. Actually, what's what's kind of funny is that I I was tell remember how I was telling you that Kasparov crushed short in a in a tournament. Um that was a thematic tournament and they played a lot of um King's Gambit games and Kasparov had to play um I think this I think this position I think they gave Kasparov this and say just defend it and I think this was on the board uh and then then I think Kasparov played this move No, I think Kasparov might have been black in that in that in that game. Wait. So that that line went this. G five. And the reason I'm telling you about the Kasparov game is that I actually saw that game analyzed, I think, in a playlist by the St. Louis Chess Club and Scholastic Center. Um, or at least it was mentioned in one of those games. I think it was Yasser Serowan who talks about it. Not not sure it's fake. It's a long time ago. It could be Ben Feingold. One of those two. And um, they don't go into the game, but they mention this game. So it might be fun just to show it because they've annotated it here. And we got you got an hour, right? Last Last video was an hour. So let's let's have a look at it. Uh, it went d4. There you go. Now you just take complete control. Bishop b7. Bishop. I'm sorry. Bishop b7. There it is. Attacking. Okay. H4. Okay. Sacrifice. Sacrificing the pawn, but you you might want to get it back. Rook g8. Okay. King G1. Wow. He moves his king into the file that is probably going to be opened at some point. Or or this way. Wow. Okay. Right. King G1. Oh, he does it immediately. G takes H1. Rook takes H4. Uh, H1. H4. Queen g6, just, you know, threatening checkmate. Queen e2, he saw it. Knight takes e4. There you go. Opening the bishop line, which is well worth the, uh, the piece. Right, okay. Rook takes f4. Why don't you why don't you just take this back? I'm not sure. Maybe this okay. Takes f4. F5. There you go. Cementing that knight. That's a good knight. Knight h4. Protecting and attacking. It's good. I like that. Queen g3. All right. This is super duper winning for white. Yeah. Knight takes e4. Yeah, and Kasparov lost. Because he resigned. Um, why did he resign? He can take with the bishop. And it looks like he got something. Okay, for starters, you lose this pawn.
Okay, both these moves are good. I would probably just take the free pawn, which is the best move. However, this is also good. And you're in check, so you have to do something. Probably just take it. And then you take e4, and the guy's in check. King d8. And here I would blunder and take the rook. This is a, a lot of material, but the meter goes down. Because of c6, that's a good move. Is it? Yeah, because then this protects the knight. There you go. This is this is funny. Bishop d2. You sack the bishop. Okay. Wow. All right. So I would blunder and do that. What is the best move here? You have to be careful. Knight f5, hit the queen, takes, takes, it's still good. Oh, uh, this is, it's not threatening mate, actually. Knight f5, and chess is hard. That's, uh, all right, so that was the short Kasparov game that Kasparov lost. He plays knight to h5, because he protects the pawn. What else does he do? Yeah, Kumpi doesn't like that move. Kumpi's He's not giving me the the arrows that the other that the other thing did yesterday, but I mean, when I when I look at the evaluation uh Yeah, that's not good. It's not good. Yeah, once once this idea is dealt with, Black soon finds himself on the retreat. He's he's also threatening this move, yeah? Check. And of course you can't take it because the queen takes your rook and you've just lost the exchange and your king has to come here and then you can even take yeah you can even take the queen and then win the pawn let's let's see that in action for example if you make if you make a nothing move check takes queen takes and you if you if you if you put your king here you lose this so you have to protect oh you can also put your knight in between that might be better yeah I missed that in my analysis but you still You still lose this? Yeah, not sure. Okay, so that's terrible. So that's also a threat. Okay, knight, knight h4. Oh, sorry, knight h4. I'm assuming this is to stop that idea with the check because now you can just take it and your, your thing is protected. Is that, is, is that the case though? It's not hanging, of course. Yeah, you have the rook still. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, so this is completely hopeless, that idea. Okay, so he stops it. One of the more recent annotators is the German GM Robert Hübner. More recent, meaning not 200 years ago. Right. Many, many people think that there are better moves. Okay. Queen G5. Okay. Attacking the knight. Knight F5. Right. Now that the threat is dealt with, you go here. And I think this is the best move. That's probably not what he played. C6, no. Okay, so I think this is the best move. What does Kumpi say? G6, yeah, there we go. So this is what was played in the game. And Kumpi and, and I, we both feel that this is a lot better. And now the question is, where do you want to go with that, with that knight? Uh, D4. D4. Okay. All right. But he goes for he goes for this. Which is good for white. Which is good for white. Um yeah, g6 again is, is, uh, okay. He plays g4, which is attacking the knight and protecting the knight. But that bishop, that bishop is, uh, right, knight f6. Retreating. Okay. And now rook g1 exclamation mark. And the bishop is off. There we go. Rook g1 exclam. An imaginative peace sacrifice. The idea is to gain masses of time driving the black queen around the board. This will give white an enormous lead in development. Okay, so we're coming back to the theme of the King's Gambit that you sack material in order to gain time, to gain development speed. Now, both of the players have, let's make that blue or green, have a lot of pieces back on the back rank. Can we make this? No. Wait, how did I? Okay, that's green. How do I make it blue? I want to make it blue. Alt. Alt makes stuff blue. So white has got a little bit of extra development already. Develop the rook. Develop the... Develop... Okay, so maybe you could argue it's kind of the same. But you're down, you're down a full piece, yeah? Okay. C takes b5. Bam. h4. X clam. Now, where does the queen go? You got two squares. Which one do you pick? Oh, you don't have two squares. You have one square. This, okay. There we go. Only move. H5 is a good move. Queen goes back. So you, you've just won a ton of space. Yeah, and returning returning the the piece doesn't do anything. Returning the piece G takes H takes. Queen F6. Knight C3. Attacks upon. 
Bishop b7. Let's not care about the pawn. Knight takes b5 with a winning position. Threatening. Threatening the fork. And there's... Yeah, okay. That's a hopeless position. So, queen goes back. Queen f3 was the next move. And now you're never playing g6, are you, aren't you? Maybe you are playing g6 as soon as possible. Just open this up. Get rid of that knight. Yeah. Knight d4. Okay. But the guy really doesn't want to do anything. By the way, this move, you're not playing g6 the next move because... You know, that would be embarrassing. I just noticed that there are, there are no squares for the queen. You go there, the knight takes, or the bishop takes. You go here, the knight takes. There, 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 there's just no space. So this is, this is, I'm sorry, this move is just threatening, threatening the pawn and the queen. So you can play, you can, you can dislodge the knight, this move. Okay, so the knight goes back because the queen needs squares, right? You need an escape, you need an escape route. Yeah. And again, the counter sacrifice doesn't really work. You go back, it doesn't really work. Bishop takes f4, queen f6. So, you know, um, I mean, I'm counting a lot, I, I'm I, just setting up the board. He's setting up the board for the next game, right? Notice that your your uh your piece for pawn down and kumpi says that it's that you're almost four points better than your opponent yeah that's a lot ginger tea okay once more black chooses the most aggressive option much more sober is the full retreat yeah, it doesn't at this point it doesn't matter. Um this would have been better according to the annotator. And and in that case, I would just suggest that you put back all the pawns and just start over. But okay. This is much more aggressive because, you know, counterplay on on this square, which we'll see because I've I've seen this game before. And the magic starts to happen very, very quickly. Okay, knight c3. That's, you know. Bishop c5. Also, aggression. Knight d5. Attacking the queen. Now you got, I, I wanna make these, these blue. Maybe I should make them green. Wait, can I make them green? There we go. Green knights. Look at all the squares they take. These are just... Oh, we already had that one. These are just absolutely phenomenal. Beast. Beasts. Look at them. Look at them. I'm forgetting a square even here. This is the this is the Nordic rune of of harassment. This is the the devil the devil rune of destruction, right? 
Horrible. Horrible. I would I would just I would give up if I were black at this position. I would just throw in the towel and say, "All right. I don't I don't even want to calculate all those night those night jumps. I don't want to do it." Not Kizaritsky or Adalbert Bagration fell. He took the pawn attacking a rook with check. He didn't take the other rook. Um yeah. And um Anderson didn't really care. Uh he 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 played a double exclam move and then um you have to add a question mark. That's what they did here. They 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 give two exclams and then a question mark, which is kind of funny. Bishop d6 is the move. And um Pumpy really do doesn't like this move at all. Uh, they say it's they say it's a horrible blunder. You, you're going from plus four, let's say, ish, to minus. Pumpy is not sure. Minus five. Yeah. It's an immortal sacrifice. The two exclamation marks are for ingenuity, while the question mark is for the actual strength of the move. It's a terrible move, Kumpi says so. Kumpi, Kumpi, uh, just says take one rook. King b two, king e two. Bishop, mm, not bishop takes g, not queen b two. Just queen b2. Makes sense. You're threatening to take. Let's say rook c1. Because. Okay, this is a dark square, so. Could that be annoying? Okay. I was I was looking at this. King d2. Kumpi now likes that move for some reason. And now it can't make up its mind. Bishop takes g1. Now you take the other rook. Okay, but this is not minus five, yeah? This is triple zeros. What what happened to what what happened to rar minus five? You're losing everything. That's probably because he doesn't see King D one. Takes it takes Compu a while to figure out what's going on. Bishop takes C five. What? That is so weird. Kumpi now wants me to do this. Just give up the pawn, go back to f1, queen, and queen takes c5, and suddenly... Somehow Kumpi thinks this is better than than my idea, which, which he agreed with when I played it. Now bishop takes g1. That that analysis, see there, it dissipates. For some reason, computer thinks here it's minus R kill destruction minus eight. Take the rook. Take the rook. And then when we actually take the rook, Kumpi's like, nah, wait a second. Wait a second, it's plus thirteen, but after e five. E5. After E5, we're made it. It he d he just doesn't spot that. He just doesn't spot that in the browser. Bishop B7. Knight C7 check. Knight C7 check. 
I would say this check is stronger. King d8. Queen takes f7. Why? Why couldn't we just give this check? Because it's terrible. King c8. Bishop takes d5. Oh, wait, there's this knight. Oh, and then you take the bishop. Ah, okay. So that doesn't work. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, let's see. Bishop d6. Bishop d6. Um, okay. Queen takes a1, check, king up, and he didn't go back here. He played bishop to, he took the rook. He was be, being, you know, being the gentleman, you know, accepting the, um, accepting the gambit. But it's the losing move of the game. It's not actually the losing move yet. The annotator's right. By this stage, I imagine Kizuritsky was too much in mid-flow not to capture the second rook. It would certainly have been less sporting to play the strong move queen b2, after which the outcome of the game remains far from certain. Yeah, okay. So... Back back in the romantic era of chess, if somebody offered you a piece, it was considered ungentlemanlike behavior if you didn't take it. So there were two rooks on prees. Kizuritsky just had to take it. You know, he was he was being the gentleman. I he's like saying, okay, I allow you to checkmate me. If if you can prove that this was good, then it's good on you. Um, this is a this is the move that I that I like the most of this game. Um, it's e5, and it's a, it's a fantastic move. I like it a lot because um, what it does is it stops the queen from protecting this pawn. Now, why is that pawn important? Um, I I already showed you a line where you take and the king is in check, and you know there's there's a checkmate here or this. A checkmate there maybe if this knight is gone and i think that's what what uh anderson um must have seen when he played after after he played this and i'm still wondering um what if what if you just say no dice then this is mating four immediately because this is check king d8 Knight takes f7 check. King e8. Knight d6 check. Yeah, and then there's mate here. Ah, that's funny. There you go. That's a that's a that's a beautiful little pattern. Okay, so obviously you can't take it. So the guy thought, okay, let's be the gentleman. Let's take both the rooks and have the guy prove it. And the guy proved it with this move, which he saw before he played this. Um, it's, it's a fantastic move. Um, the, I think this is one of the... One of, I wouldn't say it's my, my favorite game ever played. I really like the Kasparov Topolov game which I hope is also in the book, so we'll get to that eventually. Um, the opera game is really nice. I like the opera game a lot more than I like this game because there are many mistakes in this game. Um, but it's a, it's, a really cute, it's a really cute tactical finish. Um, and it involves taking here. And he, he chooses the funniest way to actually do it. 
Um, knight a, knight a6. Because he's defending against against the knight check, I guess. Okay. All right. But now knight takes h. No, sorry, g7 check, king d8, and uh, <laughs> the annotators write the final glory in a game of many glories. Um, the funniest way to to get the checkmate is to sack the queen. Right, makes sense. Because, you know, there's checkmate. You can king can king can go anywhere. And you can deliver the checkmate there because the knight takes that square. So it takes and now it's checkmate. Right? It's not checkers. You don't have to you don't have to take it back. You don't have to do any of that. So that's how the game that's how the game finished. Uh in this position, right to both rooks, e5, maybe he saw e5 when he played this even, just I don't care about the rooks, I'm going to checkmate you because I got, I got the e5 move, let's see where did he, maybe he saw it here. To see that line is 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 incredible. Um, a lot of fun. A lot of a very very fun game. Um, annotators write lessons from this game. It goes without saying that Black was punished in this game for his lack of respect for development. Yeah, in the Romantic era of chess, defensive techniques were not very well developed. Okay, I I dare I dare Carlson to play this against Karyakin. I dare Carson to play this against, uh, you know, Geary. You would probably be Geary. But, you know, d defense. Defense. Uh, sacrifices tended to be readily accepted. It was, it was in fact, ungentlemanlike not to do it. So, all right. Um, the Brian counter gambit is a very dodgy opening. Just ask Gary Kasparov. Yeah, okay. So, um, the Brian counter gambit is the e4, e5, c4, blah, blah, blah. This this move is the Briar counter gambit. All right. And, you know, don't play it. That's basically... That's basically what we learned from this game and the game um, uh, Short Kasparov that I showed you where, where they forced Gary Kasparov to play this to defend this after this move. It was a thematic tournament. All right. Hope you enjoyed the Immortal game. Next game in the list that we'll take a look at is the Evergreen game. Also an Anderson game, but this time he plays Jean Dufresne. Dufresne. D Je Jeannie Dufresne. It's a year later, and it's an Evans gambit, which is funny because I don't think... Is that? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I have to research that one. Okay. Hope you had fun.